G'day Cobbers, welcome back to the bush. Actually, Ty's carport today. Now in this episode of Lockie Hubs 4 wheel driving, we're gonna be stalling an emuing into Ty's 100 series Land Cruiser, same as 105. So, let's get into it. All right, so let's have a look at what's in the kit for starters. Firstly, we've got the outer frame and the emu wing itself, and we've got a box of bits and pieces. So we've got some promotional material, bit of a sticker, always great, and the instruction manual. We're blokes, so we probably won't read this until we get stuck. Now we've got a box of bits and pieces, sorry, bag of bits and pieces. And uh, it's actually got a bottle opener in there for a wing. A couple of gas struts, Sikaflex. It's always great when a company actually includes things like glues and stuff that you need for the installation. A couple of brackets, rubber seal, and branded hinges. Okay, let's start with the installation. Now on the inside, we have to start removing the interior pieces and we'll start with the seat belts. Now with that done, we'll get to the other side, remove the middle back seat and the grab handle. And now for the middle back seat. And not to forget the grab handle. There's a couple of Phillips heads on either side. Now with that done, let's remove the panel itself. Okay, and with a little bit of perseverance, you'll get out the side moulding. Now with the trim out of the way, we have to start removing the rear window, and to do that, we'll start with the latch here. With that done, let's move on to the front. Okay, so next up, two insert screws here and here. Now I've got tie on the outside holding the window so it doesn't drop out onto the concrete. Make sure you don't drop these into the door panel itself. That's one. <laughs> Under number two. Now these would be an absolute bugger to get from a nut and bolt shop, so try not to drop them into the door panel. Okay, and now onto the outside and we can remove the window. Okay, so now from the outside we can pull the window out. So just get in behind the right hand side, put your fingers in there. And you should be able to draw it out fairly easily. So now we can get on with the installation of the frame. And of course don't forget the rubber seal. And that's just a pinch weld seal, so we can just rip him out. Beautiful. Now, in order to glue the frame in, we need to make sure our surfaces are very clean. So we'll get some metho onto here, and we'll give it a good clean up and make sure it's ready so the sick of flex sticks properly to it. Okay, so it's imperative we get it all off, and I've cleaned most of here around. You can use prep sole or isopropyl alcohol, whatever you have at hand. We had mental aid spirits, so that's what we're using. Main thing is to make sure it's dead clean and we've gotten all the old residue off from the factory. So in the manual, and we did actually resort to reading the manual, it says there should be about a five mil gap on this side and three mil gap at the bottom. To try and even up the spaces, we've got a couple of pieces of aluminium and Tice put a couple of bits of tape there just to protect his paintwork. And we're gonna grab the frame and have a bit of a test fit up. 
So I've got two at the bottom there. Now these clamps are imperative to fitting up And now that's in, we can have a look at the top as well. So there should be about a five mil gap here. And of course we're gonna sicker flex this in later. So when you're happy with the fit up, put a couple of little marks there so you know where you're going back to when you've actually got sicker flex on there. Okay, so we're happy with the position of the emu wing frame on the vehicle. So we've run a bit of tape right around the edge. Now that'll serve two purposes for us. Firstly, it allows us to put the window frame exactly back in the same spot. And secondly, the sicker flex won't get all over the bodywork. Okay, so we finished off putting a bead of sicker flex right around the edge. Now this is where a mate's gonna come in handy and Ty's gonna give me a hand. So we'll line it up as best we can with our original marks. and get your mate to uh, start clamping it down. Ooh. And have excess clamps. <laughs> There's two holes on the 100 series you'll have to fill in. One here, we already put a bug in there with a bit of sicker flex, and one up the top here. And we put a bit of sicker flex on, on that bung to ensure we get a watertight seal. There is some tape supplied with it, but we went tape yeah, probably not. We'd rather go with a, a proper bung and a bit of sicker flex to make sure 100% we're not going to get any water ingress from those holes. And by the magic of editing, we're now 24 hours ahead. Today is now tomorrow. And the sicker flex has fully cured. So we're right now to take off all of the little clamps. With the clamps removed, we'll get to and remove all this tape. Now after that, we've got these two brackets that reinforce the top hinges that you'll see us install in a few minutes. And this is just to give a bit more bracing up the top so it doesn't move around. And now with that done, we need to put on the internal reinforcement brackets. So they fit up on the inside of here to reinforce where the hinge sits. So we'll do that now. So we found the right Allen key size from there. Now we get the bracket and split it from the back. So it sandwiches in. And then just a couple of nuts on the back side. So we've temporarily reinserted the interior panel so we can mark it up. So these are the locking plates. So we're just going to mark up either side of that because we need to trim it just a little bit. All four of those. And then up near where the edge comes in. And we'll give them a bit of a trim as well. Now with that done, we can take the interior panel back out and trim it up with a Dremel tool. So now we've trimmed it, we're just going to clean up the edges before we trial fit it. Okay, so we've temporarily refitted the panel and we're going to check our clearances. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. But you're better off cutting less initially than cutting too generously and leaving yourself big gaps. Because you can always cut out a little bit more, but it's very hard to put the plastic back afterwards. Right here, so that looks decent and I'm happy with the fitment, so it's onto the hinges. Now we're going to install the outside mounting screws for the actual EMU wing. So I'll pass that to Ty and he's got to put it in from the outside and I'll get the washes in from this side and the nuts and settle it in. Now we've got them all started, we need to cinch them up so we can start on the adjustments. Okay, so we've made some rough adjustments using these nuts and bolts here and these studs and bolts here and we've had to move the panel all the way a little bit forward and then tighten these up again. So now it's time for the gas struts. Now these do compress. So you can just pop that one on and then compress the other one. 
and pop that in. Simple as that, and then go and do the front one. And don't forget, the gas strut itself, the pressure cylinder, goes towards the top. In order to install the rubber seal, we need to know exactly where, in reference to the door, it'll be. So, what we're going to do is a little bit of chalk, and we're going to run that around the edge. So just a non-permanent mark, and then we'll be able to tell when we lift up the door exactly where we should be placing the seal. Now because it's a cool day today, and we want this to adhere properly, we've actually heated up the panel a little bit with a hot air blower, and of course you're going to have to have a join in your rubber somewhere. So what we've done is you can see our chalk mark along the edge here, and we want our join in our rubber to be as far away from entries of water or dust as possible. So the dust will come in from this side and of course the water will come in from the top. So I've chosen right in the middle of the bottom and that's where my join will be. So it's self-adhesive and we'll just start sticking it down. Take your time and work your way all the way around the edge. Okay, when you come into completion of it, you need to make sure the ends are butted up against each other. So maybe a little bit extra and then pull it back and use the rubber's natural elasticity to push against the original part that you put up first. So we've put the clips back onto the inside of the interior panel and now it's time to fit it up for the final time. Okay, so what do we think in the end? Well, I quite like it. I mean, when Ty puts his draw system back in, the reason for the MU wing is to fit his travel buddy. And Ty likes a pie, I love a pie, and this is gonna get access to his pies. So it's all good by us. The quality of manufacture, pretty good, I think. I mean, everything went together pretty well. We didn't have to grind or cut or manufacture new brackets or anything like that. So that was all good. Price-wise, how much did she cost you? Uh, it's a touch over $700. $700. I think that's decent value. What about you, mate? Oh, I don't think it's too bad for everything you get in the kit, to be honest. So it's a turnkey solution. You will need a little bit of DIY skill, but like I said, you won't need any metal fabrication skill because with basic hand tools, a couple of screwdrivers and whatnot, you can fit this by yourself. So what do you think, mate? Mate, can't wait to get it in use. <laughs> Beauty. Thanks, guys. Now, if you like this review, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Record camera, Recording. camera monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, so called talent. <laughs> alleged talent. <laughs> I don't allege that I'm talented in anything, mate. All right.